Um, I'm again, I think, uh, talk, talking about something I'm only medium, medium qualified about. Uh, I, I use finesse occasionally, but probably only a couple times per year. And um, I'm showing you this because finesse, finesse is one of the top or main uh, optical simulation programs in the field. Um, there's a couple more, and the one that I'm used to using as a kind of set of MATLAB scripts, but it's not yet open source, or it's kind of open source, but it's not, uh, it doesn't have a good manual and support and so on. Finesse, uh, the team working on Finesse uh, has really done a great job of uh, t testing it, putting out examples, making it very user friendly. There's a nearly 200 page manual and they've uh, made a lot of presentations like this one about uh, how it works and how to use it. It's, it's really easy to get started. Uh, this is a presentation by uh, Charlotte Bond and Daniel Brown. They did this, uh, they presented this to us in uh, LIGO, Louisiana, uh, um, yeah, earlier this year. Um, I, this is not the topic of my lecture here, but I'm reminded there is this thing that we started having a few, maybe one or two years ago, which is called this so-called commissioning workshop. And so far there's been no uh, LIGO India participation. I think maybe because I forgot to put people here on the mailing list. I, I'm sure it's my fault. But uh, wh what the idea is, is although we have these typical meetings where people go and give status of my project and you say everything is going right and it's exactly as we planned it several years ago and wonderful, wonderful. Um, the t purpose of these commissioning workshops is to have a more, to, you know, the people who are actually doing the real work, there's no bosses, uh, arrive in one place and we go to some place that has an actual interferometer and we do some work. We talk some and we discuss but then try to do some real work and learn something and exchange uh, dirty secrets that we usually don't tell other people because they're embarrassing or seem trivial or something like that. Uh, and this was at, at the recent one we talked about how to handle thermal problems and problems with alignment control. Uh, the next one will be at Caltech uh, in the first week of February. So let me, let me know if you'd like to attend. So uh, I'm just going to go through uh, what uh, Charlotte talked about. Oh, maybe full screen. Oh no. Exit full screen. How about this? Mm. Uh, typical optics problems. Zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, finesse follows uh, basically what I described before, although uh, the details are a bit different. It's explained in the first several pages of the manual. Um, it, it's so far, uh, one of the reasons I don't use it at the moment is it doesn't handle yet radiation pressure effects, although it, it will soon. And similarly, uh, I think it doesn't quite handle correctly the fact that the if you put in a highly non-classical squeeze state, then you get some corruption of that from many of the loss ports, and uh, that's not well handled. But I think everything else is good. Uh, so anyway, it's uh, what is what is finesse? So here are some links about it where you can get it. Um, you go to this link here, gwoptics.org. That's the uh, website of Andreas Fries's group at University of Birmingham. And if you go to uh, finesse here, you can. Uh, it tells you how to use it. Here are examples, and you can download it. It's. Uh, I think it's developed on GitHub, so you can become part of the development if you want. Uh, what's the What's the point? What does it do? Um, you give it an input file, which looks something like this thing on the left. It's a typical uh, net list, net list or node list stuff. It's. This is basically the. Uh, follow on to the uh, LISO electronics program that I described. Um, so you tell it some things like I have some lasers like this, uh, I have uh, this node connects to this node with this element, this mirror connects this node to this node, etc. And you put these all in 
uh, then you run finesse on this parameter file and it tells you something like here are some time series, here are some transfer functions, here is this noise. It just does some of these basic optics calculations for you. And in uh, recent years it started doing a lot more than just plane wave things. Um, let me show you some examples. Uh, yeah, you run it, blah, blah. There's a manual, forum. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, supporting things. There's this GUI for it, which is called Luxor. Uh, this is, you can also download this for free. This is meant uh, so you get a quick start and you can set up some simple configurations. And so you don't have to know the syntax of the, uh, syntax of the parameter file. This does it for you. Uh, OptoCAD is a, a, it's a CAD program written by Roland Schilling. It does really mechanical layouts and all these things for you. There's an interface between this and Finesse now. And similarly for some other ones here, mode matching and so on. Um, so I'm just going to show you some plots of what it can do and then I'll, I'll switch over to running it. You can make some of these things here, error signals, transfer functions. This image down here, it's hard to see, but it's the kind of beam, uh, beam profile. Um, you can get, because it does the full matrix calculations, not for the plane wave, but for all the higher order modes that you, all that you want anyway. Uh, you can get distortions, um, higher order Laguerre modes. You can see aperturing effects. You can put in thermal lensing in the optics and see the effect of, on the contrast. Um, you can see the resonance of multi, uh, several higher order Hermit Gaussian modes. Um, and then um, I won't go through this one, but if you want, you can also from the website download this package called Sim Tools. This is a, a set of MATLAB scripts that work in both Octave and uh, MATLAB and allow you to do things like analysis, basic analysis and plotting of, of finesse stuff. Okay, so now let me run Finesse. So I've, I've downloaded Finesse. Um, uh, you download it, it's, it comes as a, a, a file like this called cat, no, no. Anyway, maybe, yeah, maybe it's this cat 1.1. And you have a directory here, Finesse. Um, in here I've also downloaded some example files. So the executable is this thing called cat. And you run it, and it tells you things like, here's the version number, and so on, and how do I, how do I use it? Uh, well, you do cat-h, and it gives you some simple commands, how you could run it from the command line. Um, it's, it's better just to give it this parameter file. So this is one of the example uh, uh, parameter files, and this is for the same Fabry Pro cavity that I've just talked about analytically. And we can, we can walk through it a little bit. So in each place, uh, you define some node. There's this node N1, mirror N2, uh, space S, S1, so that's the propagator. N3 is the surface of this thing, M2 the mirror, and then node 4. Um, and whereas I, I made some, some special uh, uh, distinction between this forward going and backward going, in finesse it's not necessary. This, this position handles everything. And so this includes the field which is coming in from this way and the field which is also going out. Um, so then now you can set it up. You can give it an input and say, here I have this uh, laser field. Oh, that's invisible. I have this laser field uh, at node 1, uh, a mirror. You give it this reflectivity and transmission. And the, the key thing is just to do it in some way which is uh, clear to yourself. So some people like this ASCII art definition, so you can do it. Um, I find the ASCII, I sometimes do it, but ASCII art is very tedious to do. So it's, for your own self, you can just use a piece of paper, draw the thing, write down the nodes, and then type everything in. And that, that works just fine. And although there, yeah, there is this GUI program that you can use. Uh, for me, a after the first couple of hours of using it, I, I find the GUI is no longer uh, the fastest way to do it. And this, this typing is so easy that you can just do it. Um, and then you can define some detectors. Here's an amplitude detector. You can also have phase detectors, power detectors. Because this is a simulation, you can do things which are impossible. You can ask for there to be detectors at every single node within the system and get everything you want, just simulation. And then these are just some details about plotting, axes, and whatever. 
and the default is that it uses GNU plot, so you have to have GNU plot installed. And I I've, I've changed the option here so it makes PDF file instead of using GNU plot. Okay. Uh, so, so then to run it, I say cat cavity one dot dot cat. And yeah, it runs calling GNU plot and it's made a new PDF file here, cavity, so I can open it now. Cavity one dot PDF. <clears throat> so it scanned the laser frequency according to the parameter file and it outputs the both the amplitude and the phase of the field at, at some node. Let me look up what it actually was supposed to be doing. Yeah. <clears throat> so here it moved the frequency like so minus 50k to plus 50k and the output was which one? Yes, this amplitude detector AD1. happening okay <laughs> I I don't know what to me what that means let's not look at that <laughs> I don't know what's happening all right it's fixed anyway so you, you see here's some basic example of how to do it and there's not much more I can tell you besides uh, you know yeah, you, you you download it unzip it run it um, these guys have gone to a lot of effort to have, I mean, everything is here. There's a big uh, readme file installed. They, it ships with 10 or so examples. Um, there's a manual. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you about this manual. Uh, hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, hook, hooking up things in finesse is even easier than this matrix thing that I showed you. Uh, here, anyway, here's the manual. It's what it looks like. Uh, blah blah blah. But anyway, there's a huge table of contents. You can see everything is covered in here. It gives you the mathematical description, um, how to do higher order spatial modes, and some fancier things you can do like uh, fitting and um, alignment and radius of curvature and so on. So. Almost, almost everything you need to do is in here. And I think it's compatible if you like MATLAB or Python. It's, it's supported, it has a large user base, and it's open source, so you can look at the code, and it's free. So this, this is a fine way to get started in doing any kind of optical simulation you want. Uh, and it, I, I think they have been working on adding radiation pressure for a while, but uh, th there's a good chance it will be there in a year or so. And as long as you're dealing in the low power case or with heavy enough masses, then the radiation pressure effects are not yet important. Does it also you talk about linear distortion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it layers on this section of the mirror? Yep, here in page 90, mirror surface phase maps, some details about how to do it. Uh, and here's how it's defined. The reflectivity gets this. I don't know if you can see. The reflected field gets this phase shift, which depends on the spatial coordinates. And then you just load the data. And it also does absorption maps. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think it's extraordinary. There's no, there's, in this field anyway, there's almost nothing which is documented so well as this. So you can do this for a while if you're unhappy with finesse, of course. Uh, you can write your own optic simulation software, as people tend to, but this, this does almost everything for you. So I think tomorrow we'll try to get this installed in the computer lab. Yeah, and then we can take part of the um, time for experiments, so we can do this pseudo virtual experiment. So it's sociological experiment to see if you can run finesse, and then uh, exper optical experiment within the computer to see if you can do something, whatever you're interested in doing. So. I would say uh, one interesting thing to do is to take, you first take this example and see if something happens, but then connect together, make two FabriPro arms and a power recycling, hook it all up together and see if uh, it behaves like you think. And then uh, try to run it, see if the sensitivity looks like it should, see how it behaves to gravitation wave signal. Um, and then after that, you'll be more of a finesse expert than I am. Then I'm done.
Um, let's see. Does anyone have any specific questions about finesse? I doubt I can answer them, but I, I, I can make up something. Yes. Um, as Andrea said to me, when I was a Linux person, he said, Mac OS is the best Linux distribution out there. So then I switched. Yeah, it, it's this and Liso are both originally designed to run under Linux. I think maybe it even runs, let's, let's see here. This is the page if you go to GW Optics Finesse and it says download the binary, yes, Windows Linux OS X. Yes, it is, yeah, anyway, lots of stuff is there. I don't know. It's a good question. You're talking like laser cavities. I don't know. These are the things I don't know. Like does it, can it do nonlinear optics, like squeeze things, and can it do gain things, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there might be ways you can, you can make it happen by, by fooling it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would, I would just say then, uh, uh, Finesse is not the only simulation package out there. And there's um, many out there which are available depending upon what kind of things you need to do. Uh, in most cases, I would say the fastest thing to do is not write your own software, but download something someone else has, get something someone else has written, and then you can uh, use it for some, yeah, use it for something. So for each we have codes which do time domain simulation. Finesse is a basically frequency domain simulation. Um, then there are codes which handle uh, arbitrary spatial uh, distortions, which are instead of any modal based thing, it's a purely numerical uh, grid where it's you. Uh, it's a basically FFT based spatial propagation code. Um, there are other codes which are. Uh, dedicated to doing thermal distortions and thermal modeling and basically there's no single uh, one code to rule them all kind of thing out there but if you want to do any job there's usually some combination of a couple of codes you can get and stick it together and, and do what you need and I think the key is in trying to figure is in figuring out uh, how how simple you can make your problem and still have it be be useful and try Almost always when someone wants to do the full full spatial field, full time domain simulation to include all full nonlinearities and everything, they fail. So don't do that. Uh, that's yeah, it's some, although there's more out there. So this is File you can download finesse examples, um, and then these things, lengths, tunings, modulation, and so on. That doesn't really compact. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I was going to say this does not encompass everything. And then there's this heading, complex. Yeah, this this is good actually. This if you if you can do these three things here, that will be almost everything you need to know. Um, yeah, you can get everything manuals. Read me says what's in there. Luxor is downloadable. Um, it's right now. I think Finesse is in the middle of also be making itself Python, Python friendly. Um, it used to be based had some Perl based stuff, but Python is more hip, I think. So whenever you run uh, Finesse at the end of it, if you if you notice, you get you get this thing called .m and you get this thing called .py and the .py is a Python file that you can run which will do the plotting for you and the same the the MATLAB one is a MATLAB one will do MATLAB plotting for you based on the output data that's very handy I think no, you can. There's an interface uh, so that you can run Finesse directly from inside of MATLAB and perhaps from Python also. There, in fact, I think there is a... 
Yeah, yeah, here. You can, there's this ne uh, way to do it by network. So there's, from MATLAB Octave, you can run Finesse, and then you can also run it on the cluster. If you were, if you wanted to do a kind of serious Monte Carlo thing where you'd run it tens of thousands of times and do a multi-dimensional parameter search, you can, you can do that too. Um, So I think, uh, you know, we've we've made. Oh, I don't have this network connection, but um, you know, people. Some people have been asking me, sort of like, what are important problems to work on, and so on. And we have been collecting a list of uh, interesting open problems in interferometry and open problems in detector characterization, for example. But um, there's no similar thing yet for this simulation side of things, but if people are interested in getting into that, probably we can somehow organize the community to lay out a set of interesting simulation problems or, or problems to be uh, yeah, investigated using simulation. And that, I think that's the only way to really learn to use these tools is to have some urgent problem that you're trying to answer. Okay. <laughs> oh, I should I should have said there's this uh, this thing out here, I think it's called, I think Space Time Quest is the one. Have you heard of Space Time Quest? Anybody? Yeah. Am I, I think Space Time Quest is the video game, which sounds funny, but it's the video game which these guys have written, which involves designing your own gravitational wave interferometer for detection. So you do things like you balance a budget and you adjust scientific, some, like R&D and something like this. And then at the end, you press go. And then it tries to build your project. And then it, you'd make detections or not detections. So if you go to this web page, I think if you click on Space Time Quest, this game will come to you. And then you can, you, you too can see if, I didn't do very well. I, I tried probably like 20 times. I thought, you know, I've been working in this field for a long time. I should be able to win Space Time Quest. But there was some some college student, you know, like Ed, Edward one one four or something, who had high score. It's embarrassing. Anyway, you can try it out. I think it's not it's not too. When I played it, I didn't feel like the rules were wrong. I just felt like I wasn't doing it right. So, please take a look. <laughs> 